Hello, welcome to this lesson in engineering circuit analysis. We're going to continue our discussion with op amps, and here we have very important goals in this lesson. We're going to first of all discuss, discuss the concept of the op amp uh, diagram and refining that diagram to be a little bit more useful. So we're going to simplify it a little bit. We've already drawn the op amp diagram before, but we're going to kind of refine it a little bit, make it a little bit simpler to actually draw when we develop our actual circuits and start solving problems. The next thing is actually one of the most important things we're going to study in this entire class. And we're finally going to talk about the concept of the gain of the amplifier. But we're going to start the discussion by talking about what we call the open loop gain. And you'll understand, it'll be a few lessons from now before you understand why we call it the open loop gain. But the open loop gain of the amplifier is the intrinsic amplification that that amplifier has. So we're going to talk about that in this lesson. And we're also going to talk about the concept of the linear region and the saturation of the amplifier. Basically, when you build these things, you have a set of constraints based on the amplifier, how it's powered, and what you're doing with it. We call that the linear region, which is the region that you want to operate the amplifier in for typical applications. And beyond that linear region, we have something called saturation. That's generally something you want to avoid. So those are the boundaries that we can operate this amplifier in to do useful you know, work in a circuit. So let's go ahead and talk about these things right now as we draw you know, the diagrams and discuss these in a little bit more detail. So as we said, the very first thing we want to do when we talk about op amps in this lesson is we want to refine the circuit diagram. So we have drawn these in the past. But what we're doing now is we're refining the drawing. And what I'm, you'll understand by, what I mean by that as we, as we go along. So here's your, uh, uh, in, uh, your, uh, your amplifier. Here's your inverting input and your non-inverting input. And notice that I'm drawing uh, the plus sign on the top or the uh, non-inverting input on the top and the inverting in input on the bottom for now. But as you draw real circuits, you can flip this thing upside down and draw it however you like. But here I'm going to put plus on top and minus on the bottom. Okay. Now this amplifier is powered. It has some power sources. We've talked about those. So the way I'm going to draw it here is we're going to change it and make it a little bit simpler and we're just going to write VCC up here and we're going to write minus VCC down here. Now in the previous uh, lesson we did draw the circuit diagram and we drew this plus VCC power supply kind of over here connected to ground and then the minus VCC power supply connected to ground. But in order to save space typically you can write these as just kind of hanging out here and it's implied that whenever you connect a plus VCC up here it's connected to the actual source which is you know an actual circuit but we just kind of leave it floating like this in order to kind of declutter the drawing. Okay now on the input side obviously you have uh, an input going into the non-inverting input, and you have an, an input lead going into the inverting input. Now I'm going to redraw some of the same things that we've done in the past. The output current, the reference direction for the output current, is taken to flow into the op amp. It's, it may not actually be going into the op amp, but we're going to take the reference direction to do that. Um, and then we have the current going into this input, the non-inverting, or I'm sorry, the inverting input is I sub 1. And then we have the current going into this terminal, the op amp, we call it I sub 2. It's important for you to remember I sub 1 and I sub 2. You can think of it as the sub 1 here is like a, a line that goes with the inverting input, and then number 2 goes with the other input. So think of a little dash here going with the dash here. Now along those lines, we need to define the other voltages here. So I'm going to draw a reference here, right, which is connected to ground. Right? So you need to kind of get used to seeing these things in electrical engineering drawn this way. So we're going to draw the output voltage as V naught, V output. And we're going to draw the input voltage. This will be plus or minus V sub 1. Again, notice that the 1 goes with the inverting terminal. And then over here we're going to have V sub 2 like this. So you need to take a second here to, to make sure you understand this. Actually, I forgot one more thing I'm going to draw. We have current coming in from this power supply, from the positive VCC power supply. We'll call that I sub C positive. What this means is that it's current from the positive VCC source. That's why it's positive. The, the sub C just means it's coming from VCC. This is the supply current coming in and powering the amplifier. And then you have a supply current coming in on this side. This side we'll call it I sub C negative because it's coming in from the negative VCC supply. Now, this is kind of a little bit simplified from what we've drawn before because we're not drawing the VCC sources here and we're also not even completing the circuit. Nor, you know, really, this output is going to be connected usually through a resistor to ground. The inputs will have sources here, maybe with other resistors to ground. Then this may have another source here, maybe with a resistor to ground. 
But from a general point of view, we can kind of draw a reference node, which we can call ground down here. The triangle means this is a reference point, the common node, we call it ground, a reference potential of zero volts. And everything is measured with respect to that. So V2 plus uh, negative here, the, the negative terminal is tied to ground. So this voltage up here, positive V2, is with respect to a, 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 a ground potential of zero volts. And then, same thing here, this is measured with respect to the same common terminal, we call it zero volts. This is measured, the output, with respect to the same common terminal. So I just need you to understand that in reality, if you were gonna build this thing, you would have this thing connected through some load to ground. This would be connected to a source to ground. This would be connected to a source to ground. They would all be connected together, forming an actual circuit. But to simplify things, we don't draw all those return paths because then you have too many lines on your paper, especially when you have more complicated drawings. So you'll see it like this. The other thing I'll point out is these supply currents, we typically don't, we don't usually do analysis with that too much. I mean, the amplifier is going to consume whatever current it's going to consume. We typically are mostly interested in the input currents and the output currents, the input voltages and the output voltages. We're just drawing this here for completeness. Now this is simpler than what we've done before, but we can actually simplify it even more. So we're going to simplify this drawing uh, even just a little bit more. And I want you to get used to seeing it this way. So we're going to simplify this a little bit more by, again, drawing our op amp like this. We have an output terminal. We're going to have a reference potential, a reference ground, right, of zero volts. And we're going to have an inverting terminal and a non-inverting terminal like this. And we're going to have these two inputs just like before. But what we're going to do here is we're going to uh, write I sub zero. This is going to be the input I sub 2, same as before. This is going to be the input I sub 1, same as before. And then we're going to reference the output to ground. And we're going to reference this input, V sub 1, to ground. We're going to reference this one also to ground, V sub 2. This is slightly simpler, though. Why? Because we didn't even bother to draw the positive and negative supply voltages for the, power, for the actual amplifier itself. So this is very typically how you might see it in an actual schematic. Um, because what happens is these, these supply voltages, they're kind of Im implied that you have to have some kind of supply voltage on the positive side and some kind of supply voltage on the negative side to power this op amp, right? So if you have a diagram with five of these op amps, it gets really cumbersome to continue drawing these things all the time. So very frequently you might not see it at all. I just want you to know that if you don't see these supply voltages, it doesn't mean they're not there. It just means that they're not drawn because it's implied when you work with enough circuits that you have to power these things. It's like you can't power a stereo without plugging it in the wall. Same thing with an op amp. You can't use the thing without you know, having some sort of supply voltage. Okay. Now the next thing we're going to do after we've you know, kind of learned this, uh, I just wanted you to understand uh, generally how we're going to simplify these uh, diagrams a little bit, is probably one of the most important things that we're going to learn in this entire class. And that's called the open loop voltage gain. Now why do you think we're studying op amps anyway? Well, it's because it's a basic building block amplifier that's well behaved and we can construct lots of different kinds of circuits with it. So a basic fundamental thing that we need to know about this op amp is how much amplification is going on. Is it amplifying it two times? Is it amplifying it times three, times four? What's it doing? Well, this is where you're going to get your answer. The output voltage of this op amp is equal to something called the open loop voltage gain. We call it A, capital A multiplied by V sub 2, which is an input voltage, minus V sub 1, which is the other input voltage. So this number, it's just a number, it's called the gain. Well, I'm going to refer to it right now as the gain, but you need to know it's called the open loop voltage gain, and I'll explain what that means in just a second. But this gain is multiplied by, not by just V2, and not by just V1, the inputs. It's actually multiplied by the difference between these inputs, V2 minus V1. So really, this guy... Uh, is, let me just go ahead and write this down. The V sub 2, don't forget, go up here and look. This is the voltage associated as the input to the non-inverting terminal. So this is the non-inverting terminal or input, really what I should have written. So I'll put plus sign here. And then this guy is the inverting terminal, which is the minus sign. Now, notice why I tried to drill it into you here, that the V1 goes with the negative input, with the inverting input, so that when you read this, you'll know, oh, this is the non-inverting, okay, this is the inverting, because you kind of know what these numbers mean. 
So essentially what op amps do, this, this is the punchline, is they don't just amplify V1 or V2, or at least not in their basic configuration. What they do is they amplify the difference between these voltages. It's a difference amplifier. So that's one thing you need to kind of get through your head here in the beginning. When you look at this initially, you see two voltages going in, and you automatically think, well, it must have two amplifiers, one of them for V1 and one of them for V2. But really, this thing is set up to take the difference between them, to subtract the voltages and amplify the difference. And you might say, well, that's not what I want. I want to amplify V2 or V1. Just hang in there. We're going to go into different configurations. We can design circuit elements like resistors around this amplifier to get it to do whatever you want it to do. But in its basic configuration, it's always amplifying the difference. The other thing I want to make sure you understand, because it's going to become important later, is that the subtraction is important. It's taking the V2 terminal, which is this terminal, subtracting the V1 input in this direction, multiplying by some gain A, and that's the output voltage. So it's important for you to know, for instance, if V2 is bigger than V1, like let's say V2 is 5 volts and V1 is 1 volt, it's going to be 5 minus 1. That's going to give you a positive 4. Multiply by the gain and you're going to get some positive amplification out of it. But if V2 happens to be smaller, like if V2 is like 3 and V uh, V1 is like 10, then you're going to get 3 minus 10 here. They'll give you a negative number. You multiply by the gain, you'll get a negative output. So when you subtract these things, the order does matter. It's not, I'm not just trying to get you to remember that it's the difference between them. I really want you to remember that it's V2 minus V1. Or you can think of it as positive terminal minus this negative terminal. And that's kind of one of the origins of why it's called the inverting terminal anyway, because you end up subtracting this one during the amplification process. All right, that's about all I want to say about the open loop voltage gain. The other thing I want to talk about, I'm actually going to draw you a picture in a second, but I want to talk to you about what we call the linear region. It's very, 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 very important that you understand the concept of a linear region. All right, I'm going to draw a picture. It's going to make it crystal clear in just a second, but the bottom line is you can't just amplify this thing to the moon, right? I mean, it's amplifying the difference, and it's multiplying by some 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 gain A, and you're going to get an output voltage. But clearly, you can't have an input of like a couple of volts and a gain of 10,000, and then you, you, you get an output voltage of like 100,000 volts. I mean, that's not going to work. That'll violate the laws of physics and conservation of energy, right? So what really happens with these amplifiers is there's this linear region that you have to stay inside of in order for it to function linearly. In other words, when you increase the, the inputs, the output increases linearly. By, by linear, I mean multiplied by a constant number, a gain A. Beyond that linear region, the amplifier doesn't work anymore. And that linear region, once you see it, you'll understand immediately. The output voltage, V0, must be less than VCC. And it must be greater than negative VCC. Now, when you think about it, that makes complete sense because this amplifier is powered by a positive supply and a negative supply. That's going into these internal electronics, which we haven't really discussed, but that's basically powering the positive and negative um, you know, boundaries of what this amplifier can do. So the output, no matter what it is, can never be bigger than the supply voltage. So, uh, for instance, if the supply voltage up here were 15 volts, if I was powering this op amp with plus 15 volts and minus 15 volts, the output voltage would always have to be between negative 15 volts and positive 15 volts. If you ever try to drive the amplifier past that, it's going to flatline. It's not going to go any higher than that. That's what we call saturation. Okay? Um, another way you can write this, you might see in your book, another way to write this is that V0 must be less than the absolute value of VCC. What this is basically saying is no matter if VCC is positive 10 or negative 10, you take the absolute value of that, it gives you a positive number, V0 must be less than that, less than or equal to that. Otherwise, you're in the saturation region. So we'll talk about saturation and more in just a second, but what you need to know is that there's a linear region of every amplifier, and it's really simple to understand. You can't drive the output any farther than the positive or the negative supply voltages that power it. Now what I want to do next is leave that up on the screen and draw a quick picture of what this might look like so we can learn a little bit more. Okay, So what you can say is you can go here and draw a graph of this. It's, a picture is worth a thousand words a lot of times. Remember, what we're, uh, the output here is V0 and the input, what we actually are amplifying, 
is not V2 or V1. It's actually the difference between V2 or V1. So on this axis, I'm going to put V2 minus V1. That's what I'm actually amplifying, right? So what's going to happen here is if V2 minus V1 is 0, you're going to start here, and you're multiplying by some gain. It's going to give you 0 as an output, right? But as you start increasing the difference between this guy, when you start increasing the difference between V2 minus V1, because you're multiplying by a gain, the output is going to go up linearly, right? Because you're just multiplying this difference by a number. So it's going to go up, 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 up like this. But as I told you, the linear region means the output can never, ever get bigger than VCC. So eventually it's going to go up, up, up and reach a point where it's going to flatline because it can't go any higher than VCC because that's the supply voltage, right? So let me draw that as a picture. If you start here with the difference between those at zero and start increasing the difference, you're going to be multiplying by this gain, so the output voltage is going to be going up. But eventually you're going to reach a point where you're going to hit saturation and it's going to go flatline like this. Now, exactly the same thing is going to happen on the negative side. It's going to reach saturation in the negative direction because what happens is if I take this difference in the negative direction where, let's say, V2 is smaller than V1, so like 3 minus 5, you know, or 3 minus 4, anything that would give you a negative number, we're amplifying it times A is a positive gain, so it's going to give you a negative output voltage eventually to the point where it can't go anymore and it's going to flatline into what we call saturation. So let me write this over here. We call this positive saturation, and we call this negative saturation. Right? Those are very important concepts for you to understand. Now, let me ask you a question. What is this breakpoint here? I mean, I already told you that the output can't get any higher than VCC on the positive side or, v or negative VCC on the negative side. By the way, I'm going to remind you, the positive supply voltage does not have to be equal to the negative supply voltage. This could be positive 10 and negative 5, for instance. Then your positive saturation would be at a different point than your negative saturation. So whatever these numbers are, that's as high as it goes, and it doesn't go any farther than that. So what's going to be this number here? I'll just give you the punch line here. Let's go and draw the other line down here. The input voltage difference, V2 minus V1, um, can basically never be bigger than VCC over the gain A. Otherwise, you hit saturation. I'll draw the same thing over here. The input voltage in the negative direction, the input voltage difference, V2 minus V1, can never be negative, uh, bigger in the negative sense of negative VCC over A. Otherwise, you hit saturation. And you have to ask yourself, why is that the case? Let's go figure out why that's the case. It's actually really, really simple because What's going to happen is you're going to continue increasing this difference between V2 minus V1. It's going to be numbers, right? But eventually you're going to hit a point where whatever VCC over A is, it's just a number, supply voltage divided by the gain. When you get to this point, we say you reach saturation. Why? Because the output voltage is always equal to the gain uh, times the input voltage, V2 minus V1. That's what we just said a second ago. So the output voltage is always going to be equal to the gain times, I'm telling you here, that the breakpoint is at VCC over A. So you see what happens? When you reach that point, the, the gains cancel, and then the output is VCC. And I already told you that you can't have an output any higher than that. So basically, this is the point, this is the magic point beyond which you know you're going to hit saturation. So if you designed a circuit, and this is not a practical circuit, you're not going to use these op amps in the open loop configuration very often, but if you did, then you could easily calculate what this number is by taking the supply voltage, dividing by the gain, and then you would know that your input difference could never be higher than that. And if it were higher than that, then when you do the multiplication, you're going to hit saturation, your output is going to reach VCC. Okay? Um, and the last thing I want to mention before I close this lesson is that the gain, the open loop gain A, is very large. Large. We design these op amps in the factory for very, very large gains, right? So a typical value of A for a typical run-of-the-mill op amp is going to be like 10,000, you know, which is 10 to the 4. So that means whatever you have as a voltage difference between your inputs, you multiply it times 10,000, and that's what your output is going to be, right? And this A here is, of course, we call the open loop voltage gain, right? So really, you can't get these things too far apart before you start saturating in the open loop configuration. So these things are designed with incredible high gains.
All right, I want to re recap really quickly, and then we're going to go off to the next section where we'll, we will understand even more about how this works, and we'll start to talk about uh, the different ways in which the, uh, the, the, the amplifiers can be configured. We have a slight simplification where we don't draw the power supply voltages everywhere. We can just draw them hanging off the top. You'll see that in circuits quite a bit. Or we can remove them entirely, and it's implied that these are here. In any case, the input currents go into the op amp. The output current reference direction is assumed to go into the op amp. And then you have your voltages all referenced to a common ground terminal. Then we have the concept of gain. Right. The most important thing you need to know about op amps is that the open loop gain A is multiplied by the difference between the inputs, V2 minus V1, that's what the output is equal to. But when you do that, there is a limit beyond which the amplifier doesn't actually let you go any higher, and that's because you'll violate the laws of physics and conservation of energy in doing it. The output can never be bigger than the positive VCC supply voltage or bigger in the negative sense in the negative direction of the negative supply voltage. And because of all that, the break point beyond which it's going to saturate is VCC over A. We just showed that. You just stick it into the equation here, and you can see that that's when the output becomes VCC. The last thing is the gain of these amplifiers are really, really big, which basically means, and I'm going to give you a little bit of a preview, because the gain of these things is so big in the open loop configuration, you can't really get these two inputs very far apart before the thing saturates because even a few millivolts difference between them is going to hit your, your saturation point. So keep that in mind as we go off in the next section. We're going to expand on that particular line of, line of reasoning and line of thought as we move on into understanding how op amps are used in circuits.